quickly interested in in Aikido just from the the philosophical standpoint, not from anything else necessarily. Well, the techniques it's were very interesting. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful, and there's beautiful philosophy behind it. Um, and the origins are it, it's fascinating. Um, and I just probably stop there. <laughs> no, I, I I was gonna say. Uh, I have a um, before I started judo. I had a black belt in Aikido because, much like you, there, there was nothing else. <laughs> and yes. I loved the philosophy, the art of peace. I was very shy. I was very weak, and it appealed to me. You know, the art of peace. You can learn these techniques. You don't have to fight, and uh, you can learn all these, you know, uh, techniques that require no strength. I was fifty-eight kilograms, so it appealed to me. The, the idea of sparring was very scary, even now. Uh, if I go to the center of Paris, I'm still terrified. But you know, now obviously you you, you know that you will always be afraid. But you just have you have to go in. But yeah. at the time, the, the idea of sparring, no way, no way. Uh, and uh, I learned a lot. But that harm, harmony type philosophy, reconciling the world, because you see, they they connect, they separate, and. No one gets hurt in a sense. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no finish on the ground if you notice. Right. Yeah. And um, if you see the founder of the of Aikido, he he went to he went to war. He he went to Manchuria and saw some things. He supposedly had visions, and so he trained a lot of Kenjutsu and martial arts in the past Jujitsu, and then he wanted to use the same techniques that are essentially for killing. Mm -hmm. But use them to reconcile the world. So, for Aikido, as you're making a philosophical statement when you're doing the technique, you're not learning it for a purpose, mm -hmm. and yeah. you're kind of polishing yourself. Everyone says that, no matter what you're training, but you are kind of polishing yourself. And now that there are arguments of oh, pre World War Two, it was very violent, blah, 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 blah. but I'm just talking about sure. Aikido <laughs> I now yeah. or how it evolved after. Um, I think if anyone wants to train Aikido, it should be after rigorous training in any other art, even if it's not Japanese, like something like boxing. If you you know the value of conflict, you know the value of strategy and getting beaten and feeling yeah. helpless and then coming out on top or not, you should have that experience so you can actually appreciate what he's actually doing. But if you have no martial experience, I think you should stay away from it as much as possible. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think it's something that people should should start in necessarily. I mean, I, no. but again, I, I I try not to should anything, but it, I don't think it's. I, I always say that like Aikido, um, and I depending on who I'm talking to, I say Aikido or I, I say Tai Chi, but both are like the highest forms of martial art. You know. Uh, um, Theoretically, <laughs> the, yeah. the problem is that there's such a high form of martial art, they're unattainable. Like, so, um, and I'm the same way as you. I think that the, the closest that we can get to, more, to Aikido is Jiu-Jitsu, mm -hmm. in my opinion, because it's where that's what, you know, of course, as Westerners, we misinterpret the idea of the gentle art uh, as being gentle. It's... There's nothing physically gentle about it other than the idea that we're um, we're kind of acquiescing to the energy, but there's still a moment of resistance. There's still a moment of physical resistance that has yeah. to take place. There's no seamless, there's no seamless flowing of energy, you know, and it's no seamless redirection of energy. There's always there always has to be a moment of resistance because that's the data collection point where you determine what is the energy that I'm trying to redirect in the first place. And so with Aikido, the literal, you know, as, as close as we can get to literally the way of harmony, thinking about the idea of seamlessly flowing in a redirective way of, of, of changing this a person's aggressive energy and neutralizing it, you know, that's, it's unattainable, but it's beautiful too at the same time. So that's, um, it, <laughs> when you were talking about the, uh, talking about, uh, uh, I guess you'd call him Osensei, uh, Morihei Ueshiba, like talking about his his life leading up to that and what led him to develop Aikido as a martial art. 
and this might be a little like lighthearted, I guess, you know, or probably not disrespectful. I don't mean it disrespectfully, but it reminds me of Bob Ross. Are you familiar with him? The painter, yeah. Bob Ross, that uh, had the TV show. <laughs> I'm, I'm not American, but I'm, I'm familiar. It's the, the man that tells you. That he's, he's got the Afro. Paint. Yeah. Yeah. And he talks. That, well, he had a, you know, I mean, he was in, I believe he was in the Marines. He was in the, yeah. he was in the military. He was in, and he saw some uh, very, like, violent, some very, like, serious action. And when he got out, it was because he, he didn't want to live that lifestyle anymore. He became such a peaceful, soft-spoken, want to do beautiful things. And it's like, it's, it's the same idea, you know, it's like, you, but the problem is, is that, you know, people that will, I think people that will often migrate to those kinds of um, philosophies that didn't experience hardship first are not going to have a full appreciation of it. So yes. it, uh, there's a Thomas Paine quote, what you uh, acquire too cheaply, you esteem too lightly. And I think that that's a, a, a common thing that happens a lot of the time. It's like you, you don't get to skip ahead. You don't get, get to skip, skip steps, you know? And, and when you compare that, you think about that too, with like the, you can't, what was the, the quote? You can't just go to her university. Right. Yeah, exactly. You can't fly into flying. That's the Nietzsche yeah. quote. It's a, if you want to fly someday, you have to first learn how to crawl, walk and run. You can't fly into flying. So it's that idea. You have to, you have to go through this hard training to really, truly appreciate, not even reach the next level, but appreciate what that next level is going to be about. So I, I always think about those kind of things whenever I think about somebody who is, um, never never experienced anything that physically difficult if if even even mentally or psychologically difficult or emotionally difficult in their life and they want to to study martial arts and so they go into like aikido or tai chi and it's like nothing against those arts at all like those are those are fantastic martial arts but yeah. you need to do some hard work to truly appreciate those you know yes uh, I'm, I'm not going to go sign up for a calculus class. I can, I can barely do long division. Like I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go enroll in in quantitative physics. You know, when I, I barely passed my science classes in high school. So yeah. it's it's uh, it's something that you need to have an appreciation and understanding about the the building blocks that led to those things. I believe. Yes, there, there is a kata in judo. It's um, it's not obscure, but it's one of the least known. Um, it it ha it's called Itsutsu no Kata, like uh, form of five, or, and it's basically the five ideals of judo. And uh, like you said, judo and jujitsu is the same for me. It, it's more aikido than aikido, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And it, it's the first one is uh, I, I I'm not gonna say them in order, but some of them, you cannot beat something in its pure form, and it shows you the. The guy walking in and he has a very firm posture and the guy is trying to rushing into him but it's due to his posture that the guy just falls down because he's mm -hmm. all over the place he's just lunging and pushing and so it, it reminds me a bit of like hicks and bass and posture and even in the stand-up judo if if you have your knees a little bit bent your your back is always straight mm -hmm. and you have firm gripping nobody can throw you yes. but when you're like this and you're you're panicking and uh you're, bit, you're bent over and mm -hmm. your butt is back and you're trying to have some type of gripping, that's where you're going to get thrown every mm -hmm. time. Yes. Um, there is also when two things meet or uh, they can naturally separate, so they create the circle and then they just go, one of them go, and mm -hmm. they don't get destroyed. So it's that's like Aikido in a sense. So yes. that's when you let an attack pass and like with Shimata Sukashi or when you go down for Satani. There's a one that was um, that's um, very interesting to me was uh, what was it? Uh, if two things do not collide oh uh, no there was one sorry if if you let it pass you you can come out victorious it's when someone gets a deep hand down your back and you return turn for Seonage and mm -hmm. you, you let their energy flow into their own attack. So and you see it a lot in yes. judo, which is great. Yes. There's another one 
where if two forces don't meet, they can both uh, continue to exist. And that's um, avoid, avoidance of conflict. You are picking your battles. You have to sometimes, you know, know that I'm not going to walk into that alley. You know, if, it, if you take it physical or if it's you're having a discussion and someone seems very unreasonable and they're kind of looking for violence, you kind of not to concede, but you know what? You're right. Let's just drop this. And then you keep your distance and go. Yeah. You know, it, it's sometimes it's better not to clash. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So these five, it's great.